Hooray, congratulations, you finally have a kitchen. And now that you have a kitchen, you need tools. And so what kind of tools exactly do you need for your kitchen? Hey everybody, I am Kim, the Millennials Mom, here with tips and advice to help you master your home and navigate your life. And today I wanna to talk about 10 different essential tools that you need for your kitchen. Okay, let's get right into it. The first must have for your kitchen is actually a grouping of items that I mentioned in another video I did entitled uh, the four most important items that you need in your kitchen. And in that video, I talked about your pots and pans and your knives, and that's gonna be your first category. And those are probably the most important investment you're gonna make in your kitchen. So that's the first thing. When it comes to pots and pans, there's really only three that you need in order to really get by. The first one, is a fry pan or a skillet. The second thing is a saucepan or a stock pan, whatever you want to call it. And then the third is what we call a stock pot. And that's a big guy, but they come in all different shapes and sizes. But if you have a combination of those, you're going to be able to uh, get by with pretty much any kind of cooking that you need to do. The knives on the same hand, there's three of them that you really want to get. The first one is a chef's knife. It's big, it's meant for bigger foods, bigger jobs. The opposite of it is this little paring knife, a little cute little thing that cuts little things like trimming an apple or cutting a strawberry, just anything you need a small knife for. And then the third one is what we call a serrated knife. And this one has little sharp edges on it. It's not a completely straight blade. I don't know if you can see them, but that cuts through things that would normally um, not take a, a real sharp knife because it's too soft and you have to kind of shred the top of it. And I'm talking like a tomato or a piece of fish where the skin is kind of um, soft. If you cut it with a serrated blade, it'll actually cut through it and slice through it a lot easier. So you definitely need a serrated knife of some size. So pots and pans, knives, huge investment for you um, and, and really foundational to what you're going to do in the rest of your kitchen. Next must have for your kitchen is a cookie sheet. Here is my cookie sheet, which I realized wasn't really cleaned very well the last time, but it is absolutely invaluable to you. There are so many things you need this for in your oven and also even for carrying stuff around, it doubles as a tray. I like to uh, buy one that has a little, uh, like a one inch sort of a lip on it. So that if, way, if you have anything juicy or wet that you're not gonna have anything dripping on your floor or your oven, but you definitely need a cookie sheet. It doesn't mean that you have to spend a lot of money on it. I've never spent a lot of money on a cookie sheet. I didn't really feel like it was necessary. It's entirely possible to spend a lot of money on it, but you don't need to. But that's my opinion, but you definitely, definitely need a cookie sheet. The third must have for your kitchen is some kind of a cutting board or a cutting mat. Now they come in every size and dimension, every kind of material you can think of. Wood blocks are very popular. There are plastic mats, there are plastic boards, everything you can think of to use your knife to cut on it so you're not actually cutting on the counter. And I just wanted to share one with you that I absolutely love. This is not sponsored. I don't make any money on this, but this mat, these are my favorite cutting mats ever. And I go, they come in a pack of four, but they're bendable and they have rubber backing on them. So when you set them on the surface, they don't move. So they're very, a lot more secure and safe. You can cut everything you want to on them, and then when you're done, you can lift them up and bend them and drop the contents of the food down into the pot or the pan that you're working at, and then you, pop, you can toss it in the dishwasher. So these have been my favorites, and I think, I know you can order them on Amazon, but I remember I was looking to have to reorder some because mine were really thrashed, and I just found them at Home Goods the other day. I was like, no way, those are the exact ones I was gonna order, and it was $5.99 for the set of four. So. I really love the mats. I think they're quick and they're convenient and they're sanitary and they're groovy, but whatever you want to use, you definitely need to get something to cut your food on. Fourth must have for your kitchen is a set of mixing bowls. Almost all, every time you buy them, they're in a set that nest into each other. I personally have metal ones and then I also have a set of glass ones. I don't love plastic mixing bowls because I sometimes feel like food sticks to them and stains them a little bit easier. And I just feel like this sometimes is a little more hygienic to have metal or glass. But either way, you are definitely gonna need a set of mixing bowls. Your fifth must have would be measuring cups and measuring spoons. You're always gonna find a set of four, the one cup, half cup, third cup, 
quarter cup, but sometimes it's really cool if you can find one that's like the eighth of a cup that go, comes with it. That's always a fun find. Um, as far as your uh, mixing spoons, you're going to end up with, usually you're going to find a set that has a tablespoon, a teaspoon, a half teaspoon, and a quarter teaspoon in it. But sometimes it's really fun if you can find a half tablespoon and then also like a little baby, like an eighth of a teaspoon. Those are super fun when you can find those. But bottom line, they're super inexpensive. You don't need anything fancy unless you want to have something fancy. Next is a one quart measuring cup. This one is by Anchor Hawking. They also, Pyrex sells them and there's other brands as well. Um, I like this because it's glass. It's got the little uh, spout on it if you need to pour liquids out of it. You can put it in the microwave. You can put it right back into the freezer and it won't uh, have a problem with the temperature changes. And you can actually put like some plastic wrap over and store something in the fridge overnight in it. It's just a really dispensable little tool and you're gonna want one. Number seven must have is a vegetable peeler. You can buy all kinds of vegetable peelers. I like these ones by OXO because they have a really good grip on them and they're comfortable to use and they really work well and I love my vegetable peeler. They, the OXO also makes this really cool one that's like a Y shape and it's just got a good grip on it and so you can actually pull away at potatoes and things like that and sometimes it's actually a little bit easier to use but you're definitely gonna want a vegetable peeler of some kind. Next item would be your long-handled kitchen utensils. We start with a long-handled spoon for cooking at the stovetop or even stirring in large bowls. You need a spatula that will help you scrape at the bottom of a pan and also scrape the side of a bowl when you're trying to clean it out. You're going to want a whisk, and this is to whip air into anything that you happen to be cooking like eggs or whipped cream or something. And then the last item, and this is like my favorite item um, of these tools, would be tongs. And as far as tongs go, there's a million uses for them that you can actually reach in and dip and pull out pasta. You can flip hot dogs if you eat hot dogs. I love hot dogs. Uh, you can do salads and stuff. And then also for people like me who are short, this is the most excellent thing to reach up to the top of the shelf. I can just reach up there and grab whatever I am. I pull it this way and I don't have to call anybody tall to come into the room to help me or get a bench out. Anyway, um, one thing I did want to tell you, and you'll probably notice on all of these, is that each one of these are silicone. And I really, really prefer silicone because number one, I think you can heat them up to like 450 degrees and they don't melt down. They're softer on your pots and pans, on your nonstick pans, they aren't going to hurt it. And they're pretty, they come in fun colors, and they're soft, and they don't scratch anything. And I love silicone, especially if you're going to use this for pulling stuff off the top of the shelf. you got to have the silicone ones where they won't stick to the item and grab it. So get your utensils. Next, you're going to want to get yourself a set of strainers. Now, strainers come in all kinds of sizes, much larger than this and even smaller than this. But basically, you're going to use strainers for rinsing out foods. You're going to use them for draining pasta if you want to. And also, even if you're baking and you want to put your flour in there and sift it to make your cakes a little softer or whatnot, um, you can use this as a sifter as well. I actually found this one, I think it's like a tea, it's meant for tea bags or something, but I use this guy more than you could possibly imagine. And I would say anybody that's going to get a strainer, get a little one. It's a million uses for it. The final must have would be a can opener and bottle opener set. Now, when you're talking about a bottle opener, you want one that has a, like a beer bottle opener on one end and then an actual can hole opener on this side that will actually puncture a little hole in the top of the can. The other thing that you want is, is obviously the can opener that will open it all the way. And I would tell you guys, invest in a good can opener. It's one of those things that breaks really easily because of the amount of torque that you're putting on it. And it, it just, it makes all the difference if you actually invest in a decent one. I think this one is by OXO. I got it at Bed Bath & Beyond and it's been a really good guy, but I've used a lot of really crappy ones before and it's really worth the hassle. It's not worth the hassle, it's worth getting a more expensive one. If you can think of anything else that I've forgotten, please list it in the comment section. And if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, I have some more videos for you to watch and you always know there's a red subscribe button here and I would love it if you would subscribe. Thank you. I will see you in my next video. Bye.